Hey, this is Jeff, and today I'm kicking off a new series. People always seem really interested when I talk about behind-the-scenes stuff, so I thought it would be cool to play through a mod while I'm making it and show you how it works. What mod? Well, the setup for my very first April Fool's video was a supposed pacifist run of Fallout 3, and the punchline was that it failed miserably because the game forces you to kill a rad roach five minutes into the tutorial. And we'll be a girl, for reasons I'll discuss in a minute. Anyway, we can mod our way around the places where the game requires killing to enable a 100% no-kill run. Obviously, if the only goal was to finish the game with your kill counter at zero, you could do that with console commands. The fun part will be doing it in a way that's immersive and at least plausible in terms of canon. I went with a female character so we can take the Black Widow perk, purely because it lets you bypass some speech checks. It also gives you bonus damage against male enemies, and since there are more male enemies than female enemies in the game, it's better for a combat-focused character than being male and taking the Lady Killer perk, but that won't be a factor in this run. Her name will be Luz, which means light. Not so much because she's a beacon of hope for the Wasteland. Even though she'll be a pacifist, she won't necessarily be a good person. I'll try to keep her karma neutral to avoid Talon mercs and regulators, so there might be some B&E and theft in her future. Light, because she's got a touch of the shine. If you're not a Stephen King fan, latent psychic ability. And excuse me while I spend an hour tweaking her face. I think that looks adequately sensitive. I'll be doing a balancing act between my role-playing purist tendencies and expediency. So when Luz makes counterintuitive choices that turn out for the best, it's not because I've played the game before and know what's coming, it's because she got a premonition. And now Mom has a medical emergency, the cutscene ends, and we'll skip forward a year. And now we're into the tutorial proper. This section teaches you how to move and interact with objects in the game world, and it's where we set up our special attributes, but we'll get to that after Luz puts everything that isn't nailed down into her toy box. There you go. My goodness, just a year old and already walking like a pro. You just stay here while Daddy runs to his office. You'll be okay, honey. I'll be back in a bit. I never really thought about it before, but this scene is a nice bit of foreshadowing. Spoiler warning, this won't be the last time Dad leaves us alone. And it's too early to say if the obsession with putting all the loose objects in the room neatly into her toy box is a warning sign of abandonment issues that might lead to hoarding later in life, or if she just likes her stuff to be well organized. Spoiler warning, it's a bit of both. I won't be using melee weapons, so the bonus damage from high strength doesn't matter. Reduced carry capacity is a nuisance, but no killing means less loot to carry anyway. Perception is tricky. It's related to energy weapons and explosives, which I won't be using, but it has to be at least 6 to take the light step perk. That's not absolutely essential, but not having to worry about setting off traps would be a big advantage while avoiding enemies. Maybe more importantly, the higher your perception, the farther away enemies show up on the compass, and seeing them before they see me feels like it's going to be pretty important. And since we won't be taking any combat-related perks, we'll be able to bump that up to 6 or even higher with intense training later. There will be times when I just have to tank some damage to get through a section, so high endurance is a must. I seriously doubt we'll be getting the bobblehead, but I'll leave it at 9 just in case. High Charisma, because unlike New Vegas, where only your speech skill matters, Charisma does factor into speech checks in Fallout 3, and we'll be talking our way out of as many fights as we can. Plus, you need Charisma 6 for the Animal Friend perk, and we'll definitely be taking that when it becomes available. Again, we probably won't get the bobblehead, but I'll leave it at 9 just in case. Regarding intelligence, you might think that since we'll be ignoring half of our skills, skill points aren't as important, but some of the skills we will be using, we want to get good fast. And we will be getting that bobblehead, so it can be 9 for now. Agility. Small gun skill and bonus action points don't matter, but the silent running perk requires agility 6, and we'll definitely want that when it's available. Luck increases your critical hit chance, which doesn't matter, so that's another dump stat. And we're done. Now we just need to wait for Dad to come back and have another chat, and the game will skip forward 9 more years. Happy birthday, honey. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. Our quest objective is to enjoy the party and speak with the guests, but Luz will do neither. She definitely isn't socially awkward, but she has a bad feeling about how this might turn out. 
If we skirt around the edge and approach the counter, there we go. Andy has a slight cake mishap, so we'll just keep to ourselves over here in the corner before anything else goes wrong. Oh no! I am mortified about the cake mishap. So, what do you think we should call our game? Ordinarily, you'd absolutely want to talk to Amada since she gives you the Grognak comic, but a melee weapons buff is pointless in a no-kill run. And if we don't talk to Mrs. Palmer, we won't get into a fight with Butch. Um, Here comes Dad. The Vault Kings? Jonas? Paul, you hey, really God. are as dumb as We're you all look, set down you? here. Sounds like a washing Thanks. machine or something. I'll send her right down. How's it going, sweetheart? Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. If you're standing by the door and get out as soon as it unlocks, you can... Yes. Avoid having a really depressing poem on your Pip-Boy for the rest of your life. Now, into the basement for what's usually your first combat tutorial. What are you doing down here, young lady? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. Oh, but... Dad told me it was okay to come down here. Hey, relax. I was just teasing. Listen, now that you're ten, you don't have to take guff like that from grown-ups anymore. Got it? <laughs> Hold on one more minute. I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. Ooh, a birthday surprise. Cool. Are you ready for your surprise? What kind of surprise? The Overseer gave you your Pip-Boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. So, what do you think? Want to give it a try? Here? We can't shoot a gun here. We sure can't, unless we want the Overseer beating down our door. Jonas and I have found a place, though. Come on. Sounds pretty neat. Nothing wrong with a bit of competitive target shooting. Probably not going to have a biathlon team in the vault, but still, kind of cool. Careful, it's a rad roach. Think you can take care of that with your BB gun? Just aim and shoot. You'll be fine. And this is where a no-kill run would ordinarily grind to a halt, because in the vanilla game you can't leave the level until you kill the roach. But, with the mod active, if we go talk to Dad... You can do this. Having trouble with that red roach? Normally you only have the first two options. What's a rad roach? Or how do I kill it? But with the mod we now have a third. But... It's green on my Pip-Boy radar. That means it's not hostile, right? Yes, I suppose it does. But it's just a rad roach. We can't allow them to survive down here. And again, in the vanilla game, you only get the first two options. I can do it or I can't do it. But the mod adds another third option. I won't do it. I see. Well, I'm proud of you. Don't compromise who you are. Now, just give me the BB gun. And now... Dad kills the roach for us. That's one less round roach to deal with. Let's get a picture together. Capture the moment. Hey, Jonas, get a picture of me with the birthday girl. And you may have noticed his follow-up lines are slightly different if you let him do it, so he doesn't congratulate you for killing the roach or refer to you as the big game hunter when he talks to Jonas. Now the game skips forward another six years, and as soon as that's done, I'll drop a save and show you how I did all that. The beginning and the end. As far as I can tell, you're a perfectly healthy 16-year-old girl. So, yes, you have to go to class to take your GOAT exam. Go on now. You've got a GOAT to take. Uh, bye, Dad. Take care, sweetie. I got out of here. And good luck.
Actually, I'm going to pick up the medicine bobblehead so I don't forget later and then show you the mod stuff. You do get a second chance to pick it up later in the game if you miss it here, but having stim packs heal more damage is almost certainly going to be useful sooner rather than later. This is the main screen of the GEC, an acronym for the Garden of Eden Construction Kit, just like the device of the same name in the game. A bit meta. It's the same tool Bethesda used to create the game itself, and they released it for free to the modding community, which is very cool, especially considering how some game companies are ambivalent or even openly hostile toward third-party mods. I'll put a link in the description if you want to try it yourself. What you see down the left side is a list of all the types of objects you can add or modify grouped into categories. Everything from factions and quests, to actors, which is the generic term for creatures and NPCs, to items like weapons and armor and so on. It looks a bit intimidating at first, but for any given feature, you typically only work with a few objects at a time. And this is a good place to point out the difference between objects and resources. Resources are created with other tools outside the GEC and constitute most of what you actually see and hear in the game, 3D models, sound effects, and recorded dialogue, that kind of thing. Those resources are assigned to objects in the GEC, and the objects in the GEC define how the player interacts with them. The main object type I had to modify to change Dad's behavior was the quest, which is where NPC dialogue and the objectives you see in your Pip-Boy quest screen are set up. The quest that's active from the birthday party scene to when Jonas takes your picture is CG02, Growing Up Fast. If we double-click on that, we get the quest screen. Across the top, we have tabs with general data, stages and objectives, and a bunch of different categories of dialogue. Somewhat counterintuitively, topics are interactive conversations the player can have with NPCs, while conversations are typically conversations between NPCs that happen in the background. And as you might expect, combat is where you find the lines that NPCs speak during combat. Detection holds the lines they say to signal your detection status, like where'd he go, or found you, and so on. So let's open the topics tab. Every line of dialogue related to this quest is in the list down the left. The greeting topic is always present. It holds all of the possible first lines an NPC might say when you click on them. And conveniently close to the top, we have the line Dad says if you click on him after he asks you to kill the roach, but before you do it, having trouble with that red roach. Down in the conditions box is a list of things that must be true for the game to pick that particular line for him to say at that particular time. In this case, the NPC is Dad, and the quest stage is 55 or higher. Over on the right, you can see a list of topics the player will be able to choose from after Dad speaks his greeting. So you can see this is the right spot to inject the new behavior we want. But, directly modifying an object creates a potential conflict with other mods that want to change that object. If two mods change the same object, whichever one is last in the load order wins, and the first mod's changes are ignored. So best practice is to make changes in as non-invasive a way as possible. There are different techniques to do this for different kinds of objects, but in the case of dialogue, it's pretty simple, because any topic can be included in any quest. So what I did was create a new quest, a Pam dialogue, Pam for pacifism and more, which is what I'm calling the mod, because in addition to enabling a no-kill run, I may be closing a few other gaps along the way. The leading A doesn't mean anything. It's just so I won't have to scroll down to find it when the list is sorted alphabetically. Anyway, you see I added two existing topics, CG02 Dad Roach 1 and Greeting, to my new quest, and created one new topic, APAM Dad Roach 5, for the new lines. Dad's Greeting has the same dialogue and conditions as the one in the CG02 quest, but because I gave the APAM Dialogue quest a slightly higher priority than the vanilla CG02 quest on the Quest Data tab, this is the version the game selects when you click on it. And as you can see in the list of choices, this greeting has the two existing choices plus the new topic. And here's that new topic. It has one new question the player can ask about the Rad Roach being green on the Pip-Boy compass in the first part of the dialogue. But the rubber hits the road with the second choice. The prompt the player will see is, I won't do it. And what Dad says back if we pick that option goes in the response text area. Now, we can type anything we want in there, but actually making Dad say it is another story. That's where the resources I talked about come in. If you double-click on the response text, one of the fields is the voice file name. That's the name of the audio file that lives outside the GEC that actually has that audio. 
If we were creating a new character with a voice actor to speak those lines, it's just a matter of recording them and naming the audio file to match what's here in the GEC. But for Dad, we'll need to paste together something that makes sense from his existing lines. So how do we do that? If you go to the main menu under Characters, you can look at Filtered Dialogue. This screen can show you all of the spoken lines in the game, but we'll filter it down to just Dad's lines. You can scroll through them all on this screen, but to me it's easier to use the Export Dialogue button to export all the topics that are visible with your current filter settings to a CSV file and search for relevant phrases in a spreadsheet. Once we find some lines we want to use, we can find the associated audio files and load them into an audio editor, and then cut and paste them together to make whatever deep fake we need that matches the text that we had in mind. Of course, it's not quite that simple because the game resources are packaged in BSA files, Bethesda archive files, that are basically like zip files, but they're optimized so the game engine can pull what it needs on the fly. Fortunately, there are other tools that let you extract resources from those BSAs to a predefined folder structure, and I did that long ago. We drag those files into an audio editor. I use Audacity, which is freeware. I'll put a link in the description. Once we get the audio right, we save it into that same file structure in a subfolder specific to our mod. The edit response screen in the GEC tells us what the name of the folder and the audio file should be. And the last step is to generate a lip sync file from the audio. And now Dad will actually speak the new line if we choose that option in the game. So far, so good. But how do we make him kill the roach? There are two boxes at the bottom of the topic page, Result Script Begin and Result Script End. The GEC has a powerful scripting language that lets you write code that can be invoked in many ways. Code in those boxes will be executed before or after the NPC speaks the line of dialogue, respectively. We'll use the End box so the script runs after he's finished speaking. You can type it directly into the box or hit the Edit button to get a window where you can see more of the script at one time. The first few lines are simple. We set a variable so we can check later if Dad killed the Roche for us. That's how we know whether he should say the Big Game Hunter line or the Birthday Girl line once the Roach is dead. And we remove the BB gun and ammo from the player and give them to Dad. And here's where it gets fun. The first thing I tried was simply adding Dad to a faction that's hostile to Roaches and using the Start Combat function to force him to attack it. And that worked, kind of. But here's what happened. It turns out NPCs have a really hard time hitting rad roaches with ranged weapons for some reason, probably because their hitbox is so small vertically. Which is hilarious, but not really what we want. Which brings us to AI packages. They control NPC behavior, and there are about a dozen different types. Things like follow another character, guard an area, find and or use an item, and the one we want, use a weapon. This screen lets you specify what weapon they'll use, where they'll use it, what their target will be, and the always hit flag guarantees he'll hit it. I went into the render window and dropped a marker near the shooting range where he'll stand to shoot the roach. That marker is what I selected as the location in the package window. Now we just need to get Dad to use the new package. We could add it to the list of packages on Dad's NPC screen. If we go back to the AI package screen, there are multiple tabs, and the Conditions tab lets you specify the exact circumstances when the NPC will use that package. Right now, the only condition is that the package will only be used as long as the roach is alive. If we wanted to add this package to the list of packages on his NPC screen, we'd also need to add a condition here to make sure he only uses it when the correct stage of the tutorial quest is active. But like I said earlier, directly modifying an object creates a potential conflict with other mods that change the same object. And if we add our new package to this list, it would have a conflict with any other mod that changes DAT, not just as packages, but anything on any of these tabs. So instead, we'll use another function in the result script for his dialogue. Add script package does exactly what it sounds like. It temporarily overrides whatever AI package the game would normally select from the list on their NP screen with one we specify as a parameter to the function. There is one caveat with this function. Whenever something happens that causes the game to reevaluate which AI package the NPC should currently be using, any package added by a script will be removed, and they'll revert to their default behavior. It won't be a problem here, because we can't leave the level until the roach is dead, and Dad's default package doesn't have a schedule that might cause the game to reevaluate his packages based on the time of day. 
It's just something to be aware of if you need to use this function in a less static situation. And finally, even after I got him to hit the roach reliably, he had to shoot it several times to kill it because his small gun skill is low and the BB gun is terrible. So I made a copy of the BB gun that does enough damage to reliably one-shot a rad roach and changed the script to give Dad that copy instead of the vanilla BB gun. And that's the version we played at the start of the video. So that's our first step toward a plausible and at least somewhat lore-friendly no-kill run. I decided to do these videos with the demo first and explain how it works afterwards so people who aren't into the technical stuff can just watch the playthrough and bail out when I get into the modding details. I'll be making more videos as I add features, although I can't rule out the possibility that there might be some episodes where there's no modding required to get through parts of the game without killing anything. Fallout 3 came pretty close to allowing that right out of the box, but there are definitely some places where a more elegant solution than just running past enemies, tanking the damage, and spamming stim packs would be more immersive if you're role-playing as a pacifist. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.